Welcome to VMware Go, a free web-based application that guides you through the installation and configuration of vSphere Hypervisor. Regardless of your expertise level, easy-to-use wizards will walk you through the process quickly and get you up and running in no time at all. VMware Go lets you create virtual machines in several different ways. First, you can create a new virtual machine using the Virtual Machine Wizard. Or you can use VMware P2B Converter to convert existing physical systems to virtual machines. If you have an existing VMware server, you can automatically migrate its VMs to vSphere Hypervisor. Finally, you can import popular virtual appliances from the Virtual Appliance Marketplace. VMware Go also provides IT management applications to manage and secure your infrastructure, both virtual and physical. So let's go ahead and get logged into VMware Go. You should use the same login information that you use when you registered at VMware.com. Now before I get started creating a hypervisor for the first time, I'm going to take a minute to describe the user interface to you. Um, along the upper right hand side you'll notice uh, who you're currently logged in as, an option to upgrade your free account to a pro account, a little bit more about that in a different video, um, some tabs to navigate to different areas of VMware.com, uh, log out of the application, a link to the community site, which by the way is a great place to go to get support for VMware Go. Um, along the left hand side is the main navigation menu and this just gives you options to get to different areas of the application. Uh, the virtualization quick start area is where you'll for, first go to create a hypervisor, set up virtual machines. Uh, there's also a couple different sections to manage your IT infrastructure, um, software and security patches and help desk tickets. Uh, along the right hand side is a section called My Recent Items. Now anytime you're performing an operation in VMware Go, you'll see uh, it minimized over here on the right hand side under My Recent Items, um, telling you that it's running now. Previously I'd run a hardware inventory scan and, it, and it's finished now. But that's an area you can go anytime to see uh, what's been executed in VMware Go. There's also a community data section that lets you look at what other people in the VMware Go community have been doing with VMware Go. Uh, options to find a, an, a VMware expert in your area. Uh, import virtual appliances. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started creating a hypervisor. Now if this is your first time using VMware Go, uh, you're given an option of uh, creating a brand new hypervisor. This will actually download the, uh, the installation for you and let you uh, install it to a machine that you already have ready for, for a hypervisor to be installed on. Um, or there's options if you already do have an existing hypervisor, you can use VMware Go to discover that and add it to your account. Or if you have a VMware server, you can transfer virtual machines from it to a new hypervisor um, using this uh, the migration wizard. But I'm going to go ahead and get started and jump right into uh, creating a brand new uh, hypervisor for the first time. The first thing that happens is it asks you to input an IP address for the machine that you want to install a hypervisor on. Now, this assumes it's a Windows operating system. It's going to go out to that system and test it against the hardware compatibility of your list to make sure that you can run Hypervisor. If it's not running a Windows operating system, you can always uh, click Not Running Windows and download the ISO and install it yourself. But I have a Windows system that I'm going to use as uh, uh, my hypervisor. Now, I'd, I'd encourage you to, if if you need to, you know, make a backup of the the uh, server before doing this. Um, specifying the new hypervisor name. Now, now this is just the name that it's going to call it when it, it registers it in VMware Go. Um, but when I go off to this system and test it, 
I'm going to use my current credentials because I know I have admin privileges on that system. If you didn't choose that, you'd be able to, uh, it would prompt you for a username password. And the new hypervisor is created successfully. Um, at this point, I have three different options now to create a virtual machine on that hypervisor. One is to create a blank virtual machine and install the operating system manually. One is to actually convert another physical server using uh, VMware's P2V converter. Or to import a, import a virtual appliance from the virtual appliance marketplace. I'm going to go ahead and create a uh, blank virtual machine and install the operating system. So I'm going to call this uh, just test VM, walk through this process with you. Now this OS uh, drop down list allows you to choose an operating system. Now it's important to know that this is not actually installing the operating system, rather it's just provisioning the virtual machine so that you can install it. And I'll walk through that process after this step. I'm going to choose a medium size. I'm going to go ahead and create the virtual machine. Okay, now the virtual machine is created. Uh, I can launch a remote console window on it and continue installing the operating system. Now, I'll be able to do that either from the local CD-ROM drive or by mounting an ISO file that I already have. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this open remote console link. And the remote console window uh, starts up. Um, it says, of course, operating system not found because at this point it's just blank. I haven't installed one yet. So under this devices menu at the top, I can actually connect to my local CD-ROM drive if I have the installation media. Um, or if I have a disk image file, I can, uh, I can mount that. That's what I'm going to do. So I have the Windows 7 Enterprise uh, installation file here. Open that up. It starts up the installation and begins uh, asking me questions about installing Windows 7. Now, of course, I'm not going to walk through this, but uh, same thing as installing Windows on a physical machine. It's just you're in the remote console window uh, working off of a virtual machine. And that's it. That's a, you know, I've created a blank hypervisor and added a, a, a new virtual machine that I called test VM, um, installed an operating system on it. Uh, I can uh, change at any point. I can change the configuration of that VM uh, by clicking on uh, edit view information, uh, configuration information. And uh, I can change anything, basic settings from uh, when to run the, VMware tool scripts, uh, resource allocation, memory, CPU, uh, all that information is editable uh, directly from this web interface. Uh, I'm not going to do that, but uh, again, a few edit config information is, is right down here when you're editing a virtual machine. Um, so now that I have one discovered, um, you'll notice that uh, Virtual infrastructure has a one next to it. If I if I were to click on virtual infrastructure now, you'll see I do have one hypervisor that I've created uh, called Hype One. And if I expand that, I'll notice I have one virtual machine uh, with the Microsoft Windows Seven operating system installed on it. Um, so if at any point I I do want to get back and edit that virtual machine again, I just drill down into this tree and uh, edit the the virtual machine that way. Uh, with that, I can power it on, power it off, rename it, delete it, uh, or change change its config data. I can also uh, edit a, a hypervisor from the same area. You know, instead of drilling down to, into the virtual machine, clicking on the, the actual hypervisor name itself, it'll go out to the uh, hypervisor uh, and bring up a similar screen as the... Uh, edit virtual machine screen. Uh, again, I can view its configuration information. I can uh, delete it, rename it, 
No, no. But let me talk about update. So if I'm looking at a hypervisor and I uh, choose to update it, what it's going to do is go out to that hypervisor and scan it to see if it's missing any uh, critical updates or updates from VMware. It's a very useful way of actually checking your hypervisors to see if they need updates and directly from this website also being able to apply those updates. Uh, so in this case, uh, I just installed this hypervisor. It is the most current version. Uh, so it, it's just telling me it's up to date. If it was out of date, it would tell me what, what it's missing, what updates it needs, and a button to apply those updates. So there you have it, a, a quick overview of the basic functionality provided by VMware Go. Once again, a real quick way to jumpstart virtualization, uh, regardless of your expertise level. Uh, very simple to get in, add a new hypervisor, and start creating virtual machines. We hope you enjoy the product.